So this series is meant for people relatively new to Cyberpunk 2077 looking for information on the game. And today, with 10 things you need to know about Cyberpunk, hopefully you learn something you wasn't already aware of. Guys, if you are new around here and want to show your support, do hit that like button. If you want more Cyberpunk, make sure you subscribe. Also, I am giving away copies of this game and I'll announce winners a week before the game drops. If you want to be in with a chance of winning one, drop a like on this video, leave a comment down below and make sure you are subbed to this channel. Okay, so 10 things you need to know about Cyberpunk 2077, and these won't necessarily be good things either, but hey ho, let's go! Okay, so to start, this game is nothing like Grand Theft Auto, and yes, for sure, you can go around stealing cars and beating people up, that's very much like GTA. But the core design of this game is very, very much different. Cyberpunk 2077 is a proper RPG, not a wannabe RPG. I mean, GTA 5 has a few of those RPG elements to it, but it isn't actually an RPG in my opinion. Cyberpunk 2077 is, from its structure up, it's built as an RPG. It has utterly deep levels of character customization. It has utterly deep levels of character progression and fine tuning and upgrading. It has crazy amounts of means in completing the storyline to a point of, well, you can complete the entire story without hurting a soul. Or on the other hand, you can kill everything you see. The point is to Cyberpunk, you can play it how you want. With tons of side quests, upgrades, people to meet, romances to have, and even cheat to win variables, Cyberpunk even though it looks a lot like GTA on the surface, it goes way, way deeper. Okay, so life as V, who is the person you create to own this place. This all takes place in and around Night City, an absolute huge area of six districts which all have mini districts and a city which is surrounded by even more space. It's been estimated Night City is about twice as big as Los Santos within GTA 5, but it doesn't end there with Cyberpunk as Night City is also very vertical. This means buildings are extremely tall, compact, and also for the most part, explorable and extremely detailed. The city is very busy and packed full of things to do, find, complete and take part in. And then there is the surrounding badlands, which is a lot of emptiness but goodness at the same time. Trust me people, you won't be sure of things to do right here. So we've just spoke about the city and the surrounding area. But it's also been confirmed that every single street within Night City has been named. And that's just one level of depth we see in this game. And well, just think about that for a second. Every single street, every single road has its own very name. It's like, wow. Also confirmed. Over 1,000 NPCs, non-playable characters, live days by routines, which can consist of waking up, going to work, working all day, crazy amounts of different jobs, returning home, etc, etc. Or who you can interact with also. So again, think about that for a second. Over 1,000 NPCs, characters you will see walking around those streets, will be living by daily routines. People, that is unheard of. And because of these few features I just spoke about, the world is said to truly feel alive, like nothing you could have imagined. The world feels like it's lived in, it feels like you ain't the centre of the universe. It feels like things are actually going on around you, in which you could spend your entire day just watching other people do their thing. Although that sounds kind of creepy. But yeah, the atmosphere. The non-playable characters living their own lives, the way in which things act out, and the way you can intervene with people's lives, is crazy stuff people. Talking about lives, your life path, which you have to choose, has significant effects on your playthrough. Choices and characters are completely different at times throughout the game, depending on your life path selection. So your life path is basically a three-way option. Street Kid, Corporal and Nomad. Now we won't get into the details of each, but each drastically changes the way you play the game and well, the way the game plays you. Each life path comes with benefits. So for instance, as a street kid, you'll be known by a lot of the street level gangs, where if you go nomad and you're from outside the city, that role is obviously reversed. And like I said, depending on the actual life path you choose, street kid, corporal or nomad, the entire game and all those encounters will obviously play out differently. And this is an option I feel you definitely want to think about before deciding which to go with. So with life path picked, 
it's now about character customization. And well, guys, I think what's probably on offer here is more than you need. From eye color to genitalia sizes, the game has it all, and I could go on forever explaining what can be done. It is truly staggering, and well, I cannot wait to see some of your creations. And well, it goes beyond just general luck, because there's also cyberware. Now, cyberware is any cybernetic technology permanently grafted to the human body, especially technology that interfaces with the human nervous system. Cyberware generally refers to technology that interacts with or acts in place of the human nervous system, guys. And while within this game, there are truly, utterly tons of options here for you to furthermore customize your character. But obviously, cyberware goes further than just looks and cosmetics. It affects the way in which you play the game in many different ways, from interacting with computers and cars to combat and movement. We then have your skill tree, and like a real RPG, this thing is super deep. Now when you create your character, you will have set attributes you put points into, which you can furthermore do so while playing the game and earning more attribute points, and also at the same time earn perk points. Now from this skill tree to just about everything on this top 10 list, I have made deep guides on which you will find linked via the playlist in the video description. Now the skill tree is built up around 5 major attributes like I said. All of these have different branches where other perks can be built into. All affecting the way in which you play the game. From hacking to combat to movement to weapon benefits and much much more. The skill tree here people is utterly deep, it's unreal. And lastly guys, weapons. So as you can imagine, weapons are another major part of this game. I mean you don't have to use them if you don't want to but they are there on offer just in case if you decide to. So we have three main weapon types in this game which I will state many weapon manufacturers contribute towards giving us quite a big arsenal of weapons. Many yet to be revealed, I do believe, but we have power weapons, smart weapons and tech weapons. Power weapons are conventional guns in the sense that they use traditional ammo, calibers and cartridges. This category includes a wide variety of weapons including polymer one shots which are disposable, revolvers, SMGs, machine guns, shotguns and pistols. Pistols. High rate of fire accompanied by high recoil is a feature most power weapons have. Tech weapons are weapons that use railgun technology, firing projectiles that are propelled with an electromagnetic charge. What they give up in terms of rate of fire, they make up for in penetration effects depending on how long the charge is held for. These weapons are caseless ammunition, typically jacketed in steel flèche. Now smart weapons use gyro jet technology to fire caseless guided ammo at enemies. This technology was first developed in the 1960s but was unreliable during combat. In 2077 they are different and pinpoint accurate. Smart weapons are tied to weapon grips and optics to accurately scan and track movement of targets. Paypal. But yes, it really doesn't end there with weapons because there are melee weapons too like swords, sledgehammers and more. Upgrade to your skill tree so you can tear turrets from their bearings and use them. And well, much, much more people as you can imagine. And guys, that is it. The first 10 things I feel you need to know going into or newly learning about Cyberpunk 2077. And this is the first in a line of episodes I will bring you covering what you need to know, getting a little deeper every single time. So guys, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, leaving a like button truly helps me out and I appreciate that support on my channel. But guys, the end of the video is here. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully I will see you on that next. One.